Okay, first of all, sorry for uh, taking so long. Uh, I, I was, I've been uh, sick as a dog, so <laughs> <laughs> there was like no way. I was like, we could have recorded it. We were like, hello, welcome to the car at Vlogs. That would have been <laughs> awesome. We totally should have done that. And he also did get a chance to see uh, Thor too, so we'll have like a something rhyming on that coming up. Uh, but we're not talking about that. We are talking about uh, Legend of Korra, the guide, and. Uh, where was this Korra all along? Not, That's not, not, I'm not say. only this Korra, but <laughs> every day. No, it, it, like the tents and stuff has always been good. But is it me or did this one feel like? I don't know about you, but I got this feeling like the original Last Airbender show. Like just something about the pacing of it, something about the comedy, it was something about close. the it was really balanced. But keep in mind, you were like eh, about the first season of Korra. I really liked the first season. Well, no, no, okay, okay, no, no. Yet, I mean, so. like to me, it's reminding me more of the first season of Korra. For, but for me, yeah, it, a little bit of the, the first season is is you know very dark. I think he always said it's very much sort of like this is the Dark Knight version of like the yeah, it's a political which is fine. city thriller. Kind yeah, of. I mean, which is fine. But it is nice to also see sort of in the in this world they've done to have something that really sort of called back to those roots. It just, it felt like a warm episode. It felt like you got the family, they're reunited again, they're all on this mission. Y you still have this uh, coming to grips with uh, the daughter there, like she can see the spirits and Tenzin coming to terms with the fact that he cannot guide her into the spirit world, something he's always wanted to do. So even though he's like Aang's favorite apparently, he still couldn't come through on this. It's just, there's a lot going on and it's all very genuine and it feels really it just, it's a good episode. Um, and, and yes, Korra actually, you know, of course she apologized. Yeah, big shock. Like, when they reunite, it's like, yeah, I didn't see this coming. But at the same time, it's it's very heartfelt and it's, it's very nice. And she's using her head. She's like, maybe we should use the youngest daughter. Maybe we should do that. I mean, it's... Well, and there's a nice role reversal where Tenzin's the stubborn one who's like getting yes. all pissy and no, that, that was my and, biggest fear you know, is that when they were doing the spiritual thing, she was gonna be like, "I'm not feeling it, gosh darn it!" And I was like, "I, I didn't want to do that," but yes, I like that it switched yeah. around that he's the one that can't get in there, um, and, and that he's making up excuses. It's like so. I, I think there was some moment where it's just like. Well then, so be it. We will go to the spirit world. And I was just like, finally. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, and, okay. Now here's like the for a show called the Spirit World. I'm like, oh my god. There's been so little time dealing with the spirit world here. Well, and here's the interesting thing I noticed with this episode too. So many good, interesting things happen in this episode. And I was saying to myself, why couldn't they spread this out? You have the girl see, oh, you know, you the mind. no, what? But you see the girl sees the statue, and then only now do you see oh that she God, sees spirits. Yeah. Why could you have that throughout the series? Have this mystery building? He's like, and when did you see this? And she's like, and I just like shouted out a million episodes ago. Yeah, like <laughs> why couldn't they have this go throughout the series? Uh, you know, or oh, okay. Uh, we find out in this one that Tarlock 2.0 now is in cahoots with whatever the bad spirit was, the one from like eons ago. Of uh, uh, Vatu? Yeah, okay. W how much of a bigger shock would this be if we started out earlier with the backstory of the Avatar and then only now saw it, but when it's just, what, an episode or two episodes later, it's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say this. Christ only knows I'm gonna have fanboys knocking on my door with a gun pointed to my head, but the story itself overall is okay. I've had some issues with the story going, but the story itself, the, the actual groundwork, the pieces are okay. The actual storytelling yeah. has been sloppy. This has been sloppy, sloppy, sloppy storytelling until just a couple episodes. The the episode with the original Avatar. Yeah, like, if, they, if they like, take then, that stuff and spread yeah. up. Here's another great idea. Why not tell both stories at the same time? The story of, of Korra going through this thing, and then also maybe she's getting flashes. Because that would of, be awesome. Yes. <laughs> like, like what they were doing with her remembering uh, what happened with Aang, remember? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and why couldn't they do that, showing that story slowly progress over time? It's, I, I'm with you. Now that I see what they're doing with it, it's like it's not a bad story. The execution of it and the well, pacing and the and telling I'm, is not well done. I'm so torn because I'm so appreciative of this episode and the previous episode. They're both so good. But at the same time, as much as I'm like, oh, these are really good episodes and this is really good now, I'm just kind of like, it just drives how bad those first few episodes yeah. really were in trying to get their point across and telling a coherent story. Because I'm like, there was so 
it felt like it was so much filler and so meandering. And even if you're like, well, technically it wasn't filler because this, it's still. You could pace it out. You could have paced it better and written it better and put it together in a more cohesive way. And it's just hammering in how sloppy it was, those first few episodes. I'm like, here now they have this, like, this pinpoint focus. It's like now they've got it. Yeah, we got We're it. We're going there. We but I don't everything. feel all the setup was necessary. I'm like, Man, I feel like I could have gone through that setup and pretty much cut out two whole episodes. Wait, yeah, or at, like at the, the very process. least, like I said, at the very least, you could have spread out this good stuff with the spirits. Again, it's called spirits with the rest of the episodes. Yeah. I mean, for a while, it was the all Varric Mako Nuktuk story. Yeah, like, yeah, film noir kind of stuff, which is fine, but it's like, it's called spirits. It's supposed to be about the spiritual world, and it's just so chopped up and I think part of good storytelling is that you do sort of want to be balanced out and and you know spread throughout the whole thing so it's I mean when we finally get to the spirit stuff it's great heck even maybe some of the stuff with uh you know with, with the whole crime story and everything could have been good if it was paced out then and I don't know what the deal is like I know looking at a lot of the credits it seems like the original creators did not have writing duties yeah, that, that's why I'm For a number of the episodes, I think they had the previous episode with the original Avatar. I think that's where one which of them would be like, ungodly, like, like... Which would make a yeah, lot of sense. Yeah, everyone would be able to see that. Because that was it was a really good episode. But I, that's almost what it feels like. Like, it's like people who've been explained to what Korra and Avatar is about trying to cough up a script and... I think this was a different writer for this. I don't think this was one of the original creators. I, I only glanced at the credits quickly before we turned the camera on, but if that's the case, this guy, whoever this was, actually got it. Well, I like, mean, we we don't know for sure. It looks like maybe we saw in the credits. I mean, we, we shouldn't say if we don't absolutely know. Yeah, we know, should but, probably check again. Yeah, right? but, uh, but, but whoever, 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 whatever, was, whoever was writing it, if this was one of the original creators well, or whatever, this time it's like... The, they got it. Like, this feels right. Yeah, what, what, whatever, whoever, whatever they did with this episode, uh, they needed it before, and hopefully it'll keep going in the future. It looks like it's going to keep going, because, I mean, now they're entering the spirit world, and it's... it's yes! <laughs> now, that being said, can we address a little bit of dumb? Because it's still a little bit of dumb. Uh, please, we, we're critics of what we love to do. The fact that they're setting up a love triangle again between Korra and Asami... Kill me now. I mean, no. My favorite is when he's apparently. Fra I hate frame stories too. You know, it's oh like my the, God. what did you show? What did you show? No, no, I, as, soon as, they, as soon as they hand you, it's like, yeah, he he's been using you the whole time. I'm like, don't you believe it, Rose? Rose, this horse shit, Rose. <laughs> oh, look what we got here, love, joy, and all the Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's like, oh God, I, you know, uh, like, again, Lin Bei Fong. I don't know what stupid pill medication <laughs> she's on, but it's like cut back your dosage. Her ass like, used to be so beautiful, man. She used to be so beautiful. <laughs> and now it's like, yeah, she's so dumb. I'm obviously in the pockets of these two crooked cops. <laughs> yes, Tarski and Hutch. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, maybe it would be a little more believable if they didn't draw them as such obvious crooked cops, but they really look like something out of Springfield. <laughs> yeah, or at the very least, like, they're dumb cops. Take yeah. them away, toys. <laughs> What'd you say, Chief? Do what you can, shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that stuff is just kind of... And, yeah, the, the whole idea behind a love dragon is like, you guys are dating again, and I'm like... I'm okay with that, but it's like, but you just left Cora a week ago. I'm like, yeah, and? I was like, she kicked my desk halfway across my workplace and was just being really obnoxious to me when yeah, I, I mean, was just trying to help. That, that's the thing That's the thing that bothers me is that, like, the, the bringing back the love triangle just reminds you again of how obnoxious Cora has been in the past episodes, and it's like, I'm just now getting well, used to I don't, nice, okay, sensible Cora. From a writing perspective, I don't get that. Like, I'm hoping they're just not going to do anything with it. I hope it just dies almost instantly. And I'm at a point where I so do not want to deal with it that if he goes back to Cora, fine, he goes back to Cora. But just make it instantaneous. Like, if he has to shove Asami off a cliff, because I'm like, I'm not sitting through 12 episodes or however many we're going to go through. All right, okay, H how about this? How about this? He he decides to go with Asami, and Cora fucking understands. She's like, you know what? I understand. I, I would Maybe kill if that's the case. I don't know if they're going to do I, that. I, I doubt it, but it's like, wouldn't that be like she's really come to her own? It's like, wouldn't that be just what? this unbelievable progression I'm just like, I'm like looking at this, and I'm like, I'm almost convinced that whoever is doing this show this season did not watch season one, because I'm like, 
We did this! We were there! This was resolved, and now you're doing it again? You, you know, Cassie, again? It, it feels a little bit kind of like fan fiction, where it's like, well, we got the feel and we know what it's like, so we're just gonna kind of do good it again. Um, you know, so it's like, because it's not like it's totally foreign. It's like, no, and, and they've added a lot of cool stuff, but you're right, with, with the core character, it's just sort of like, well, we've seen this, no. and, and it, this worked the first time, so, and that's my understanding of it. Now, that's so. dumb, but what's not dumb is, yeah, Asami kind of falls for Varric, you know, Varric's trick or whatever, and it may be a little dumb that she doesn't believe Mako right away, because why would Mako make it up? But did you notice her reaction? Because that was not dumb. It, yeah. the, in Mako's reaction, she's like, are you okay? You stressed? Like, yeah. are, is everything all right? Because I'm just kind of worried. Because, like, yeah, this sounds kind of weird. Like, you just saved my company. And if that were Korra, he would be in, like, some sort of waterbending tornado. Yeah, like, exactly. halfway across like, the planet for suggesting something like that. Well, yeah, that's why I hate the soul track. It just reminds me well, of what a character... And, and the funny, the funny thing is, is, like, his reaction is just so, like... What? What? I just was like, yeah, I'm not used to my girlfriend, you know, treating me with respect and not, like, trying to kick my ass or just going off on me. Or... I, 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 I'm going to say right now, because um, uh, we haven't seen, I, we know it's a week behind, and this will probably be put together with two videos, but uh, we haven't seen the next episode yet. I'm just going to put in my bid now, or maybe not my bid, but... I think Varric is sort of talking in a way, because he is so eccentric and so strange, I think it's totally possible that there may be playing that actually it's possible he's not behind it. That it sounds like he's getting obvious hits, but he is just so benign and eccentric and crazy. I could go that just way. trying to fool us. That, my that's original, my guess. My original guess was Or maybe that, I just don't want him yeah. to be the bad guy. <laughs> my original guess was that he was crazy as a fox, that half his craziness is actually a put on. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's... The only thing I will say to this show's advantage, and that being so meandering and just kind of throwing everything out there early on, I am kind of like almost in a position where it's like, I don't know exactly where they're going with this because it's really just been like sort of a crapshoot of like what. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, like. So much. Uh, yeah, but. I don't know. I mean, I even if Varric is the bad guy, I'm like, well, that's still kind of interesting. It's given the character. No, I know. I just. I'll tell you, when it keeps cutting back to Unalak, though, I start to fall asleep. Like, I just, he's just not that compelling to me. Vatu! Uh, this, the, well, yeah, no, Vatu, Vatu, Niktu, or whatever, he's more, like, compelling as a bad guy character. Well, at such a... Just stuck in his tree. I mean, well, I mean, we got a little bit with him, like, you know, like, the son gets injured, and, uh, you know, he's like, it's not important, yeah. and it's like, okay, well, now the siblings are gonna see, and they're obviously gonna turn and fight against him. Um, yeah. But, uh... And, yeah, like I said, it's just Tarlog 2.0, and Locke is in his name! I know, I know, we were coming to this conclusion, like, okay, here's the pattern. If Locke is in your name, particularly at the end, you're, you're bad. Don't guy. trust him. Just don't trust him. <laughs> um, no, I like the design, too, with Vatu stuck in the tree, but the tree is shaped in such a way that it looks like there's this giant eye in the tree. Yeah, it can peek out. Like a little too. eye of Sauron thing yeah. going. So, so uh, no, most things in this episode... Oh, and the Wuzzles. We've decided the spirits, like, it took us a while. Yeah, they're I all can't believe Wuzzles. we made a connection. We yeah, never made wuzzles. this connection. They're freaking Wuzzles. Like, 80s all kids, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. They'll yeah, know. 80s kids, if you grew up in the 80s like we did, you'll understand, but... Nickelodeon, why are you not marketing these things? I was like, oh Dragonfly God, Bunny, like... instant toy! I mean... Market these things, then reinvest in more Avatar. You don't need to play games with us anymore. You'll have enough money and be like, I don't care if it's successful or not. We made a shit ton of money on the Dragonfly Bunnies. Yeah. Or possibly a platypus bunny. You're welcome. I, uh, only saying. Bad. <laughs> Six nipples. <laughs> yeah, he did design it, by the way, so. <laughs> like, I said, here's what it looks like, and then he put that together. I'm like, wow, that is... Oh, I remember I just turned you, like, when you gave me the description, that was like... Fuck you. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, it looks so good. Nipples. So, okay, so the, the dragonfly bunnies are probably more marketable, but we're just saying, that there's a free one in there if you want to take advantage. They're, uh, I, I did love it. It's like, they're my spirit friends, and I was kind of thinking, they're kind of gay. <laughs> it's, uh, the, it's all of the, uh, like, the pastels and the little flying. Actually, I thought, like, pure Dinklage from Narnia, too, just like, do you see them? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I really like this episode. I wish it was spread out over others, but it, it's still really solid and really good, and I, I can't wait to see the next one. Now. We're back in action! Yeah!